everybody. Welcome back. So in unit two, we're going to talk about the instruments in the orchestra. Now, an orchestra is a group of musicians, usually about 100 musicians, that all play together, different instruments. And there are four basic families of instruments, strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. And I play the violin. The violin is a string instrument called the string instrument because it has four strings. A chamber orchestra is a smaller orchestra, a small group of musicians. The Australian Chamber Orchestra, the ACO, has 17 musicians. There are 10 violins, three violas, three cellos, and one double bass. And all of those instruments are string instruments. The Australian Chamber Orchestra only has string instruments. So I play the violin. I'm going to show you how it works. The instruments in the orchestra are grouped into families depending on what materials they're made of and how they are played. So the violin is part of the string family, like I said, because it has four strings. Let me show you a little bit how it works. It's made of wood. This is, uh, this is just a shoulder rest, which I use to help keep the violin stable on my shoulder, but it's not actually part of the instrument. So this is the violin. It's very beautiful. My violin was made in 1776 in Italy. So you can do the math and figure out how old my violin is. And it's made up of several parts. So this is the chin rest. It's called the chin rest because it's where my chin rests. It's pretty logical. Um, this is called the bridge right here. It looks like a bridge, literally, because it holds the strings up. And this is the fingerboard where my fingers play. This beautiful part is called the scroll, because it looks like a scroll. It's all very logical. And so that's what the violin looks like. And then I play it with the bow. Now, the bow is very cool for a reason that I will show you in a second. It's, um, this part is made of wood. And this part, can you guess what this part might be made of? I'm going to unwind it. You see, there's. A, let me put my violin down for a second. Oops. There's a screw here at the bottom. I'm going to unwind it. When I unwind it, it loosens the tension. And I think you might guess what this white part is once I unwind it. I'm loosening the tension, but the tension is building from suspense. <laughs> OK, here we go. Here's the screw. And this is what it looks like. What do you think that could be? Does anyone have any guesses? Well, I'm, I'm going to assume that you all guessed correctly. That is the hair of a horse. It's the, the horse's tail. And it's very common that when I play, after a while, the hair gets sort of old. And so every few months or so, I bring it to the bow guy. I like to call him the bow guy. <laughs> and he um, changes the hair for me. He gets new horse's hair and puts fresh hair on. So um, let me show you how it works. Basically, if you looked at this hair under a microscope, it would look like there are like tiny, tiny little hooks, like microscopic hooks that you cannot see at all with the naked eye. And those hooks grab the string and make it vibrate. So when I, when I put the bow on the string, it's like they grab the string and then the string vibrates. If I play the G string, you can actually see the string vibrating back and forth. So what happens is when I pull the bow on the string and it makes the string vibrate, it creates sound waves and the sound waves bounce around inside of the box of the violin, inside of the wood. And then the sound comes out of these holes, which are called F holes. I think they're called F holes because they actually look like the letter F. 
I'm just guessing, though. <laughs> I think that's why they're called F-holes. Um, so the sound comes out through the F-holes. And the way I change the notes is by putting my finger down on the string. When I put my finger down on the string, what I'm actually doing is making the distance between this, the string and the bridge smaller. So here, the string is vibrating from here to here, and it makes the sound. As I put my fingers down, the string is getting smaller. Right now, if my finger's here, it's only vibrating from here to here. The smaller the string, the higher the sound. So if I put my finger all the way up here, then the string is only this big. That how, that's how much is vibrating, and so it makes a super high sound. The lowest sound I can play is my G string. The, the thicker the string, the lower the sound. So on the strings, I don't know if you can see with the camera, the E string is the thinnest string, then the A string is a little bit thicker, the D string is a little bit thicker, and the G string is the thickest. Now there are four instruments in the ACO that are part of the string family. The violin, the viola is a little bit bigger than the violin, and the sound is deeper and lower. The cello is bigger than the viola, and the sound is even deeper and lower. The violin and the viola are played like this on our shoulders. The cello is played, it's too big, it's too big to hold up here. So the cello is played between the person's legs, the musician's legs, and it has an end pin that sticks out the bottom and goes into the floor to help you, to help the musician hold the cello between their legs. And then the biggest instrument is the double bass. And the double bass is taller than me, <laughs> much taller than me. It's a huge instrument. And the strings are the longest and the thickest. And so the sound is the lowest, the deepest sound. So here's my range of pitch. I can play really high. This is about the highest I can play. And it goes down. The A string is a little bit lower. The D string is a little bit lower. And the G string is the lowest. There are other instruments in the string family too, like the guitar is in the string family, um, the banjo, the harp. Basically, any instrument that has strings is in the string family. Now you're going to go onto the website and you're going to listen to a piece by the composer Benjamin Britten, which shows off each instrument family and all the members of that family in the orchestra. So you're going to learn about the string family, the wind, woodwind family, the brass family, and the percussion family. And I think you're going to find that each instrument has its own voice, kind of like a person. Have fun, and see you next time.